What's going on, growers? It's James Brigioni coming to you live from Jersey today. Me and Tucker are going to show you how to easily build a raised bed cover that will protect your garden from everything. Let's go! First, let me show you the raised bed cover that we're going to build. This is it right here. I put this one together almost four years ago and it has worked out so well. One of the reasons that it's so high value is because it's multifunctional. I use this for almost every season, which I'll show you in detail how I do that later in the video. But first I wanna show you how to actually build this cover. Let's come along the side. The first thing we need to do is build the wooden frame that the cover is going to be attached to. So what we're going to use for that is two by fours and we wanna match it to the same size as the bed. One thing we need to take into account is this piece on the end here, we want this two by four to run the full length of the bed because this cover, it's going to have a hinge in the back so it can open and close just like this. The reason we need that end piece to be full length because come on the back side over here, because we need the hinge to be attached to this full length piece. If the hinge is attached to the piece on this side, this other piece, then it's gonna cause the cover to twist. And every time we lift the cover, the torque is just gonna cause the cover to twist too much. So we want this end piece to run the full length of the bed. One thing you'll notice is that I didn't use a rust resistant hinge. So I'm gonna be going to be using a rust resistant hinge this time. So the first thing we need to do is get these end pieces cut. I took the old cover off. Now I'm going to get the measurement for the end of this bed. So we're gonna measure this side and then we'll be able to cut two pieces and that will make the ends of our bed. Check out how uh, nice some of the cauliflower is doing in here. Look how beautiful and stunning that is. But let's get our two pieces cut. I've got my two by four here. Let's just get our measurement. Then we'll mark it and then make the cut. Your measurement's gonna be different than mine. It really just depends on the size of your bed. For this build, I'm going to be using hand tools just to show you guys that anyone could do this. I got this saw right here and this uh, miter box for a dollar at a yard sale, a dollar each. So I just screwed the miter box down to the table here and I'm gonna make my cut. There we go, first cut all finished. A little harder than using a drop saw, but still works out. I got both pieces cut. Now I'm just gonna lay them where they're supposed to go. Put this one here. And then this one at the other end over here. Lay them just where they're supposed to go. Then I could just take this piece that's gonna run the full length and I could just lay it up here. I don't even have to measure it. Just lay it up and then just mark it from the top. Mark it here and then we'll cut two pieces at the same length. I got this piece marked to length. Let's get it cut. There we go. All of our pieces are cut. Let's start to put the frame together. So I'll show you how I'm attaching the top frame. I'm just gonna lay this piece right here. Line it up with the bed. Then I'm going to take my drill. We're going to pre-drill a hole so that we don't split the wood. Then I'm going to use three and a half inch deck screws. I'm going to put one screw through like this and then another one from the inside like this. So let's pre-drill first. And one on the other side. I'm just going to push this side down to make it flush. There we go. Now we're gonna do the same thing on the other three sides. Let's get the final screw in here. Just gonna put a screw right on the end. I had to use a little piece of wood here to try to level it out because my bed wasn't perfectly level. It kind of settled down after a few years. So let's get this final screw. There we go. The frame is all finished now. What I'm going to do now is take these half inch schedule 40 PVC caps and we're gonna 
take six of them. We're gonna put one in each corner of the bed. Then we're gonna put one in the center. I'm gonna drill a hole in the bottom of them first. I got all my caps drilled. Now we're just gonna measure this, 96 inches, and then just mark the center so we know where to put our center cap. So 48 inches right here. Time to attach the caps to the frame. I'm gonna put the cap on the inside of the frame just like this. This way, if you wanna put a second layer of a hoop house, which would be good heading into winter, then you could have a gap between the two. So let's get this attached. To attach the caps, I'm gonna use one and five eighths inch deck screws. Just get these attached. Just like that. And then we measured our spot for the center one. We'll attach this one here, and then we'll do it in the other corner. So we'll have six caps all attached. There we go, all attached. Tuck's just hanging out next to us. This guy's a beast, he's always watching guard of the garden. He's the king and he's the best. Spam some hearts down low for Tuck if you love seeing him in the videos. We also wanted to mention to check out some of the merch down at jamesprigioni.com. Grab a Gardening is Life shirt and be part of the team. So all of our caps are attached. Now what we're gonna do is measure the distance between the two so we can start making our hoop shapes. To get the length of PVC that we're going to need to make the half circle, we're just gonna have to use a little equation. The equation is gonna be pi times r squared. So we need to first find the radius. In order to do that, what we're gonna do is get the diameter. So we're gonna measure from the center to the center of these caps. It's about 45 inches. We're gonna take that and divide it by two. That's gonna give us 22 and a half, our radius. Then we're gonna multiply that times pi, or 3.14. That gives us about 70 inches. So that's gonna be our length. We're gonna cut that, then we could bend it into the caps. But what I'm going to do before I do that is, that 70 inches, I'm gonna subtract two inches. You only need to do this if you wanna have a second layer of a hoop house that you'll use for winter, because the second layer hoop house, we'll, we won't subtract the inches and we'll have a nice gap at the top. So for this one, we're gonna do 68 inches because 70 inches is our size and then we're just gonna subtract that two inches. For my plastic frame, the part that's gonna form the hoops, I'm going to be using Schedule 40 PVC. I'll just mark these at 68 inches. I'm gonna do three of them and then I'm gonna clamp them down and make my cuts. So let's get this clamped. And then to make the cuts, I'm just gonna be using a hacksaw. Our three pieces are cut. We're gonna start attaching them now. So we'll put one side in first and then we're just gonna bend it down to the other side. So I'm gonna stick this side in just like this. Push it, push it all the way in. And then we need to make sure that we're putting now on our T's. So these T's are three quarter inch and then on both sides and then the center T is half of an inch. We're gonna put these three on and these are gonna help form the supports for the whole entire cover. So let's slide three of these on. One, two, three. And then we're gonna bend this. I suggest stand it on top of the bed so it doesn't slip on you. It's gonna bend this down to the other side. and then push it in just like that. Those are gonna be our hoops. We're gonna do that for all three. And then we're gonna get the, uh, get long pieces to attach the whole thing together. And if you're not gonna do the two hoops, you can go with the 70 inches like I mentioned earlier, where you don't have to subtract the two inches, but this just makes it so you could have two frames if you wanna go head into winter and try to grow through the whole entire winter like we do here. So let's get the other two pieces attached. So let me get this piece center one in just like that we'll come around then we'll just force it in just like that and then for this final end piece here push this side and then make sure we get our T's in Just like that. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to screw these pieces just like this attached. This way it can kind of hold its shape. To do this, I'm gonna use uh, three quarter inch screws. And uh, these are stainless steel, so they should be 
fine with the rust and everything through the weather. So first I'm just going to center it as best by eye. This top piece that I'm going to pre-drill. Then we'll just take our stainless steel screws, take our screws and just attach them. This will help hold it together so it doesn't slide up and down on me. I'm going to do the same thing on these two ends and then do the same thing on the other side. To do this end, I'm just going to center it. I'm just going to look at it by eye as best I can. Right there, it looks pretty good. And then we'll just pre-drill. And then use our stainless steel screws. Just like that. There we go, final screw is in. Now I'm gonna get the length. To do that, I'll just put one side in over here. I'll just attach one side. Then I'll just take my marker and then mark it. I don't want it to be too long, so I'll just take a little bit off right here. Then we'll cut it. I'm gonna cut three of them at the same length. This will make up my three support pieces here. I got my three pipes lined up. I'm just gonna mark them all at the same distance and then we'll cut them. All three pieces are cut. Let's get them attached. First, I'll start with the center one. Just gonna make sure we're pushing against the backside when we're doing it. There we go. Should fit nicely just like that, as you can see. Push that one in, looks good. I'll get this side over here. Get this side in. And then this here. And then you can see it's sagging a bit, but we're gonna use some electrical tape to keep that nice and uh, level just like that. Let's get the final side in the back. Push this in. And then here. And then to get rid of this bow here, I'm just gonna use some electrical tape. So it looks like it needs to go up to about there. Then we're just gonna wrap it a few times. Just like that. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Come over here. See it's sagging a bit. So we're just gonna Raise it up to there. And we use the electrical tape because uh, if you want to grow in the winter with the plastic, we want something to be waterproof. And there it is. The basic frame is all finished. This is so fantastic because not only will it work in the, through the winter if you want to put plastic down with some greenhouse plastic and plant through the winter some greens and all that stuff, but I use it in so many different ways. It's so multifunctional. So in the early spring, I'll, use it, I'll have the plastic on top, and then as it starts to warm up, I'll take the plastic off and then use something like a row cover over the top. And then after the fear of frost is gone, then I put an insect netting over top of this. That keeps all the insects out. And then after that, now that we're heading into July at this time, at this time of the year, it starts to get really hot and planting the crops for fall can be tough when the sun is just beating down. So what I'll do is as I start to plant my fall crops late in July or early July where we're at now, I'll use a shade cloth. So you can just use so many different options on this cover. It makes growing so much easier and it's just such a high value thing. One of the reasons that I use the caps is that if I want to, I could just remove the cover by just taking it off like this just separating the caps, or I can remove the whole entire cover. But let me put the hinges in the backside, and then it'll also be hinged. This way, in, uh, in winter, when you have the plastic over the top, you don't have to pull the plastic off. You can just kind of lift the cover up and access the stuff like that. I have my rust-resistant galvanized hinge. Let's get this on. Gonna pre-drill first. Next. I'm gonna use some screws. I'm just gonna use the inch and five eighths ones. I'm gonna put this center one on first, then I can make sure it's all level. So 
it looks like it needs to go down a bit like that. That looks good. Now let's pre-drill. Do the same thing at the bottom. I could probably just do the side ones. I'll do the same thing on the other side. There we go. Final screw in. Now this thing is hinged this way in the late fall and heading into winter when we put the plastic on, we'll be able to just pick it up like this and be able to have access to the bed, just how we want it. And uh, if you want, I mean, it's tough right now, I got so much stuff growing here, but if you're gonna do the plastic in the winter, if you want, you could put a, a handle right here and then you can put a handle on the top and the bottom. This way you can kind of like tie it together so the wind doesn't blow it up if you live in a really windy area. But if you add a handle, it's just gonna cost a couple extra dollars. So one of the things I love doing is using the insect netting. And the reason this cover is so fantastic is because it's multifunctional. So you go from a, in the early summer, I mean in the early spring, having a plastic cover, and then you could use a row cover, and then you could go to an insect netting and the insect netting is so fantastic because not only does it keep insects out, it also keeps other pests out like birds or groundhogs or chipmunks or anything. Those can wreak havoc in your garden, especially for some of your young seedlings. Then I'll use something like these furring strips is what I use in the winter and I put it up on the edge and then I screw them down, but it also works fine at this time of the year. To keep the insect netting on, I'll just use bricks most of the time. Just use a brick down at the corner and pull it tight. But another thing you could use if you want, especially for the plastic, is these half inch snap clamps. I'll put a link in the, down in the description for these two. These work really nicely. You could just take this and just pop them right onto your cover and it helps hold it in, just like that. So those work fantastic also. So this is kind of how we do it. And then for every season, there's a different cover. I love the way it works so much, but I also use these covers for other things. Let me bring you to this back corner. Some of the stuff is just growing massive. Tomatoes, beautiful flowers. Check out the keyhole bed. So when I'm not using these covers, I'll take the whole entire cover off like I did here and use it to start some of my seedlings. Come back over here. It protects my seedlings from anything getting to them. You can see a bunch of peppers for a late round of peppers I'm gonna plant, doing real nice. And this is a longer cover, it's about 10 feet. So instead of having one support in the center, I have two supports here. So take that into account, because if you do grow in the winter and there's snow on it or something, you wanna make sure it's strong enough to uh, hold a little bit of snow and then the snow will just kinda slide off once uh, it starts to melt a little bit. These things work really nicely though. Let me bring you back into the main garden. You can see, I even take the tops off and I use them in different areas of the garden to support, uh, to protect my cucumbers and stuff. So there's so many different ways you can use these covers. And I even use them for the strawberries, which I showed you earlier in the year. The same structure, the way I built these covers, I also use these covers, the same, the same build for my steel raised beds too. So it works really for any kind of raised bed. That's today's video though. Me and Tuck hope you enjoyed it. We hope you got something out of it. We had a blast out here. Uh, we hope you guys noticed that the gnome challenge is on, it's still on, and it was in this video, there was a gnome hidden somewhere. Be the first one to comment with a timestamp of where the gnome was, and I'll send you an email. You e email me back what kind of shirt you want, and I'll send you a link for a free t-shirt. Me and Tuck wanted to send a thank you to one of our longtime channel members, Gail Sterner. Thanks for being a part of Team Grow. Thanks for having your hand in everything we're doing out here. We also wanted to mention to check out the merch down at jamesprigioni.com. Grab a Gardening is Life shirt, grab a Team Grow shirt, a Fruit Forest shirt. I made a video similar to this about three years ago, but I made it directed mainly on covering this, using this cover and then putting plastic, greenhouse plastic over it and then growing through the winter. As years have progressed, I've just used these covers in so many different ways. So I wanted to show you guys how I build them so that you could 
get all the incredible advantages from it because something as simple as an insect netting makes a massive difference. I mean, uh, you're growing cabbages, the cabbage white flies can't get in to your garden makes it so you don't have to spray as much and it just makes everything easier. It's such a good feeling in the early spring going inside with your raised bed covered and everything protected, not being worried whether or not a bunny's going to come in and eat all your stuff that you started when it was young. So it provides so much security, so much safety and so much peace of mind. So I think you got to get one of these built. It's not too hard. That's why I did it with hand tools to show you that anyone could do it. And it's relatively, relatively cheap to build too. So me and Tuck had a blast out here. We hope you guys did too. We hope you got some real value out of it. And we hope you try to build one of these for your raised beds. Uh, you'll be so happy you did. Tuck and James will be back to you again real soon. We out.